Welcome to the fresh and vibrant airwaves of the Pride and Promotion Podcast. Strap in and turn up the volume because you've landed on the podcast that's setting the bar for the most dynamic and inclusive marketing conversations. Join your host, Joseph Federico, as he prepares to dive into the world of marketing with an inclusive twist where we spotlight the LGBT community and celebrate the power of diversity. Get ready to be motivated as we bring in some of the most influential LGBT entrepreneurs and marketing trailblazers who are reshaping the Hey everybody, Joe Federico here, host of the Pride and Promotion podcast. Thank you for joining on another episode. And I have a very special guest, John Fisher. He is the founder of Camp Bear Hug. John, thanks so much for joining us tonight. How are you? Um, my pleasure. I'm good. I just had an Italian combo sub, so I'm like Ooh. feeling very content right now. <laughs> I would be too. That sounds delicious, and I haven't had dinner yet. I have a few more hours, so. but that sounds good. <laughs> Uh, so please tell us more about your organization and how we met, and we'll roll right into the episode from there. Cool. Yeah, I mean, so basically my whole gig is wellness for the bear community and a version of wellness that's authentic to bears. So it's, you know, not about necessarily, you know, doing a lot of the typical wellness things like yoga and that type of thing. We, I do offer bear yoga, but it's about – basically it's about, like, finding – what feels right for bears to just feel good in their bodies, feel good mentally and physically. Um, so I got into that about 10 years ago, wow. became a health and wellness coach. And then from there, it's like I kind of cobbled and together things and have grown. So it was like I was coaching bears 10 years ago. Then I created a meetup group to kind of create a social situation and, and host um, picnics and farmer's market visits that turned into a company called Pod that is now called Belly that offers um, <laughs> bear yoga and cuddle piles and massage workshops and body positivity workshops. Yeah. Then from there, I created my podcast, Belly Talk, and then most recently, Camp Bear Hug, which is like my the, the retreat arm of my, my organization. So it's kind of like I, I've just evolved and grown, and I'm in a process now of kind of trying to make all of that cohesive under like my – my brand, you know, uh, Coach Cub brand. And and you are. That's how I found you on social media from my personal experience. And then I started the podcast on, on you know, on um, Instagram. We connect and I'm like, I need you. We need more body positivity in the community, more talk about bears, when the stigmas and everything else that, that comes along with all bodies of the rainbow. And then and then mm -hmm. just to hear about how you market all this and how you've been, you know, evolving the, for the past 10 years which is amazing. So again, thanks for joining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my pleasure. I mean, this will probably be helpful for me because, you know, as you probably know, as a business owner, it's like you do so much and you go from one thing to the next. So it's like, I love these conversations because it makes me like pause and reflect and be like, how did I actually get here? <laughs> like, you know, unintended, what, what is the road been? Pause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. But we need to have these conversations and, and we have to get off. I mean, always stay on social media to promote as business owners and grow the businesses. Very important, which we'll get into in a few minutes. But we need to jump off some once in a while and support each other on our on our endeavors. Have the conversations, yeah. meet people in the community in real life, and and hopefully we can meet in person. You know, you're in New York, I'm in New Jersey, and we can you know collaborate. Cool. But our community is that's very important for us as well. Where, where in New Jersey are you? I'm in Morristown currently. Hopefully soon New York, but I'm currently in Morris, so I'm about like 30 minutes from Manhattan with traffic. Okay, because I, yeah, I live in Tapan, so I'm, like, right on the New Jersey, New York yes. line, Bergen I County. I Tapan, yeah. Get out, it's such a small little town. It, it's a small little world. It's a weird little town, too. I, I used to work in publishing, by the way. So, um, like, right across the border. From Interesting. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Again, we can we can talk about that for hours. We'll get a probably. coffee, we'll yeah. No <laughs> drinks or a dinner or a sub, whatever that may be. But I want to know, because you've been in business, you said about 10 years, right? Yeah. So what were you doing originally before all the social media really took off? How are you promoting your business 10 years ago? This is before Instagram, TikTok, Snap, the whole shebang. Yeah, I think so. What was I doing? Yeah, if I look back, it's not, no, well, not embarrassing. because <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it, everything evolves and grows. But like, I, yeah. so I went, to, I went through a health and, well, like health and wellness coaching program 
they gave me a free website that was, you know, just terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it but I'm it was sure. free and I and I had it up and it was just a place to go. So it was I had something that going. Free is something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was free and it it did the <laughs> trick, you know. I didn't need anything fancy. And at that point I like when I launched my business cuz I used to work in politics and like education reform and I was kind of in that world in New York. Mm -hmm. I just put together every contact that I had and just put it in a newsletter and just sent it to a blast to everybody I'd been in contact with up until, you know, I was 30 years old. And it, that was like my first kind of like, aha, uh -huh, you know, like doors are open, I'm coaching. Mm -hmm. I actually got two clients from that. So it was effective for that yeah, reason. Absolutely. And then, and then from there, it really was starting a meetup group. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if I, I guess I've always been like community oriented and like bringing people together. And it was, it wasn't like a conscious thing. I just said, oh, you know, I'll create a meetup. I'll do something that attracts people to me, mm -hmm. not, not charging or anything and not really hard selling. Just kind of like, hey, you know, if you're in the Brooklyn, you know, Manhattan area, come do a picnic with me every month. Mm -hmm. We'll, you know, buy food and share and just talk. And it, for me, it was like a, no, a low risk, no stress, like, I'm not charging people, it's just gathering people together. Yeah. And I think more so then maybe Meetup was more active because it was probably newer and, you know, one of those things. So a lot of, so I got a lot of people to join. At this point, I'm up to like 2,500 people. Wow. Congratulations. And thanks. And, and that kind of, that was like the first step. And then from there, I actually put on a lunch. So it was like, I was doing a lot of picnics and then I said, oh, maybe I'll do a lunch in Manhattan. Uh -huh. So I picked a restaurant, did a lunch, nobody showed up, and then one person came. Uh -huh. And that person approached me and wanted to be my business partner to, like, create, you know, an event company putting on <laughs> massage events for bears. So that was, like, just shifting me over from, like, picnics, now we're doing massages, and then, and then it grew from there. And at that point, I think, like, you know, there was – I think there was Instagram at that point, but I was not very – Active. up on it i didn't i didn't care about it my husband actually did pr for instagram back then like when facebook bought them yeah so i knew a little bit about it but i was like i'm not you know i don't really love social media and, th and then, it, then i had to eventually get comfortable with it you know which took you know probably eight years to be like oh, okay i'm i'm fine putting on putting out videos and being vulnerable here but we it are took, it took a long time <laughs> yeah and then here we are so yeah that was kind of like my main approach was meet up Instagram, and then because I'd worked in politics and campaigning, I was very um, keen on collecting contact information. So, like everything I did, very every important. picnic, every time I you know met somebody or someone came to a class, I just started compiling a list, um, you know, that I now use for a newsletter. Yeah, and you utilized email marketing ten years ago before it was even that popular. Yeah, which worked. <laughs> Yeah, it works. It's, you know, everything you do, especially when you start, it's nerve-wracking because you're like, I'm putting myself out there, you know, something can go wrong, but, and I have a ton of, I used to have, I mean, I still have anxiety, but I used to have a ton of anxiety, so I'm like, I don't know yeah. how I pushed through, but I guess I believed in what I was doing and, you know, felt the fear and did it anyways, as they say. And here you are speaking about the evolution of your business, which is amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so... Let's just pause for a moment. Again, pun intended. How um, can you explain to the community or to those out in TV land today just exactly the definition of bear so we know, just so there's no like, misconceptions about it? Like, let's just clear the air on, like, the definition, and then we'll talk about how, how you've been promoting and created a business around that. So it's funny because I don't, I don't feel like an authority on, like, bear culture. <laughs> but I guess I kind of have my own take on it and that's how I build yeah. my business. Uh -huh. So for me, it's like, I kind of use bear as like an umbrella term that kind of captures a lot of people who maybe feel disenfranchised from the LGBT community, mm -hmm. don't feel like they fit in and they, and they are all welcome in my group. So although it's for bears, it's like I have people with, you know, thinner bodies, older people, all different backgrounds, and I just make them feel comfortable. Amazing. But I think in the essence a bear, I mean, this is how it started in the 70s. It was like a counterculture to 
the like Chelsea boy looking kind of clone gay that were the you know what were just the same and you had to be fit and pretty. Yeah. The bear community emerged from that saying like, you know, we have bigger bodies, we're hairy. At that point, maybe a bit more masculine, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's evolved, which is great. Um, so that's kind of the archetype of, of a bear. It's like a big guy, beard, hair. But yeah. at this point, it's kind of, I think, like all things, it's evolving to be more inclusive and almost more like, you know, as they say, like, you know, a daddy is not necessarily someone who's older. It's like a, a state of mind. I think for, same for bears. It's like, <laughs> if you want to be part of the community, I think most people can be to some degree. And there's all different categories to it, which is always fun to explain to straight people who don't under, you know, oh, know nothing. Fun. I'm like, there's <laughs> otters. There's, I'm, I call myself Coach Cubs. So I'm a cub. Yeah. You know, there's um, panda bears and, you know, all types of, you know, woodland <laughs> creatures. So to me, it's, you know, I, I, I just think it's um, in, a, in theory, a more inclusive space. There are obviously every community has its issues. And I think at this point, there's hierarchies of bears. If you're a muscle bear, or you're Insta famous, you know, it's like it's like high school. It's like, it's like going into high school and it's like you have all these clicks, <laughs> yes, but they all, really they're is. all bears. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, just, I mean, for me too, because, you know, coming to terms really, which I'm sure, you know, we've all had this experience the past two years of talking more about, you know, being gay and what that means. Do I want a title? Do I not want a title? I'm a business owner. Am I an influencer? I mean, there's all these subdivisions, even within the community on, mm-hmm. you know, how we can label ourselves and even use that and become more powerful and 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 create from that as well to support each other which is why we're here yeah and i think like i think the other part of your question was like how did i like identify bears and then kind of use it to kind of create my path for business yeah yeah and for me it's like and anyone who has a business or, or like certain businesses are told like niche down you know especially if you're in your coaching or you're in like a service type thing mm-hmm. like massage or whatever so it's a term that like i heard throughout my schooling like find a very specific demographic to work with. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, like the bear community was right under my nose. And I just didn't think of it as like, that's, that's, that's the community the that, yeah. And part of it was like, I don't know if that's the community who's going to want <laughs> me to tell them about health and wellness and nutrition. Right. You know, but I, I eventually did niche down and realized like, at first I was like, I want to work with men. And then I start, then I realized I want to work with bears. And I had my first client years ago who was, maybe like a daddy bear type, not necessarily like fit the bear, but right. it went very well. So that was an unlock for me of like, okay, this type of person, you know, can benefit from what I'm doing. And then I just started marketing just to that community, which was like the total unlock for me of like going from feeling very broad to like, okay, I'm going after a specific demographic. And then I changed my brand to coach cub and it's evolved since then. And Mm-hmm. If I hadn't done that, I don't know. I don't think I would be successful because it would have been too broad. And now it's like, I know how to speak to my audience. I'm it's in the community. Yeah. yeah. And, and to me, it was, it's the best thing I could have ever done. I don't, I can't imagine doing my business in a different way. Yeah. You do an amazing job, by the way, on Instagram. How did you start that process? I know you're talking about it a little bit. You were very active. You were a little bit nervous. We can get into that, you know, your evolution in a moment, but you know, how did you evolve your your persona as now Coach Cub on Instagram? Like, what was your first video? How did you evolve <sighs> to where you are now? My first video, as the kids say, <laughs> was cringe. Like, and I don't know. I don't even, actually. I don't think it was on Instagram. I think it was YouTube. Oh boy! But when I look back, I'm like, ooh, like I was just a whole different version of myself. And at that point, my my message was a little different than it is now. And I think it was about like, you know, losing weight and, you know, very generic wellness, which mm-hmm. I've evolved completely on, on yeah. all of it. Um, <laughs> and then I think for Instagram, maybe I probably started with just like boomerangs and like worked my way up to like a face to camera video at some point. I, I honestly don't know, know when that was. Mm-hmm. Um, I would be afraid to like scroll back down through my timeline <laughs> but it's there if anyone wants to go digging but it's good to to at least you know as a coach your social media coach a little different than what you do good to go back and watch the replay even as cringes it may be you'll learn a lot 
about yourself and your evolution. Yeah. Here's what worked here or, or even check the comments out maybe. Right. And be like, Oh, how can I create more content from an old piece of content going forward? Evolve that. And, uh, and yeah. make it better, you know? Yeah. And I think part of it for me, could, uh, you know, we'll probably go into my evolution or whatever, but like I used to not be able to speak in public at all. Like, I have panic disorder. I have general anxiety. Yeah. The fact that I'm doing what I'm doing now just shocks me still, but I did do Toastmasters years ago, uh -huh. the public speaking group. So I did get used to like speaking and I think I just use this, the same skills on camera. So I think I was probably decent in the beginning, but still, if anything, just afraid to show my personality, mm -hmm. like really show who I am and be vulnerable. And that's evolved to today where I can just go on and share like very vulnerable things about myself and I feel fine. And you do, and you do an amazing job at that on your, on your social. Thanks. I follow you very closely. <laughs> I'm like, mm, you know, but that's also part of it is, is you're an influencer. You're a thought leader. You're a business owner. So people are looking at you wanting to probably create content like I am, you know, based off of what other people are talking about, especially in the community, which is so important. Perhaps, I mean, yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. I'll, I'll internalize that. Yes. Yes. You know. Please do. Um, <laughs> so I, just to jump around for a moment, I saw that you recently came back from New Orleans. Is that correct? With one of your retreats? Yes. So I just came Tell back. Little, yeah. Last week. So again, the evolution, it's like I created Camp Bear Hug, which is originally just retreats in Portugal. And I did those for two summers. Mm -hmm. And then last Last summer, 2023, when I was in Portugal, I had a chef from Alabama named Jonathan Harrison, who's a great, amazing chef. He was on um, Next Level Chef with Gordon Ramsay. Right. He's from the South, so he loved what we're doing in Portugal and cooking. And he said, oh. you have to go do a food tour in New Orleans. Like, I could show everybody around. And so he, he planted the seed. And as soon as I got home from Portugal last September, I met him in New Orleans a month later, and we kind of, I had never been there. Oh, my gosh. And it was, no, it was Halloween, so it was bonkers. But uh, I've been in Halloween, by the way. It is bonkers. It's like mini Mardi Gras. <laughs> yeah. Wild. So, yeah, we went and scouted it out. And then from, yeah, like October until May, we, we planned it. And then I just implemented it, um, yeah, last week. And we had a group of eight guys and then me and the chef. And it was fantastic. It was the most fun. We had, like great food. We, we did a ghost tour. I had a gorgeous house in the pool. Oh. Um, the chef did some cooking demos and had people cooking grits and shrimp with him. Uh -huh. And then my, my angle was kind of mindfulness eating in a way to enjoy the experience. So it's like getting out all the like food values and messaging we've learned from people throughout our lives mm -hmm. and kind of clearing the slate and then being like, okay, we're here to enjoy ourselves. So how do we actually be present to, to enjoy the food? Yeah. So that was like my kind of coaching angle, but uh, but yeah, it was it was a blast. Now I love that city. I've been four times, and I can go another million times. I miss it every day. It's inspired my work, my business, my writing. I mean, everything. You, yeah. I mean, it, it literally gets in your soul. Awesome. It, like, it really does. I mean, it was super humid and hot, which I love heat, but it's like it's a city that's on you, and I think it's literally. In your pores. <laughs> yeah. So for like the, for me, it was like the mindfulness eating, but also translating that to just being present. It's like, there's so many senses being peaked there. It's like color of the houses, you know, someone walks by playing music, the heat, the smells, the food. So it's like the perfect place to just like tap into that and try to like remain present to just let it all in. So it was, it was really cool in that regard. And envelop yourself, but, but then come back again as a business owner. And I said, as an author, to let it to let it roll through your system a little bit and then to let that inspire you to get to your next trip but also within your business and your coaching and everything else and let yeah. those music you know, and the and the sound and the people just speak to you and kind of guide you going forward yeah and i think like for me personally each time i've done a retreat i learn i mean i learn a lot it's like boot camp but yeah i think from doing my first retreat in portugal a few years ago i realized you don't need to, like, I, going into it, I was like, I need to create this container that's safe and, you know, supportive and we'll be in the house a lot mm -hmm. and and everyone needs to be protected because that's kind of the, the retreats that I've been to that have worked well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then from doing the first one, it was like, oh no, if we leave and go to a winery, we are a unit and like we're still supporting each other and we're doing like normal things out in the world. If we go into Lisbon and go to the bars, it's like mm -hmm. there's still opportunity for us to support each other and for me to coach people. Right. So with the food tour, it was more of a food angle, less like wellness. And I realized it's the same thing. It's like people are still getting the same benefit from this, but it's like indulgent and we're enjoying food and, you know, so it's to me, it kind of opened up another opportunity of okay now i can do food tours and mm -hmm. i think that's an easier entry point for bears anyway just like yeah i want to go eat in a good city and then Comedy. i feed them yeah, yeah then it's like i feed them a little bit of medicine of like being present and like work, doing inner work you know yeah yeah the whole the whole package <laughs> yeah if you will when you're traveling let's say new orleans again i could talk about this for hours probably another episode but when you're traveling like a place in new orleans um, as a business owner, are you also focused on creating content while you're there or somebody doing it for you? Do you record and talk about it afterwards? You know, this is very important while you're traveling to, to, to can something. So, so what's your process? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, uh, necessarily strategic in that, like the first few I knew to capture content, like, yeah, before, during and after the retreat and capture yeah. some testimonials, but especially a retreat in Portugal, I do, it's, it's eight days, I'm driving a van, it's just, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces, so not necessarily capturing as much content as, as I like. Mm -hmm. um, I have had photographers come and capture content that way. Right. So it's, it's kind of like each time I do it, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm more geared toward the marketing side of it. Sure. New Orleans, I did try to hire somebody, but it was out of my budget. So I bought the new iPhone and I, I captured a lot of content because... <laughs> The chef, you know, the chef was doing his thing a lot. So while he's cooking and handling things, I'm, you know, recording him cooking and I'm recording guests and, yeah, you know, I, I think I do have a little bit of an eye for that, and he definitely does. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, I I have tried to be strategic, like going into Portugal with my business partner there, and things just kind of go out the window because it's like creating content or like making sure, you know, we have the food set up and the, you know, all the, all the details. So right. it, it's a lot to juggle. It is again, a business owner. We wear many hats, literally wear many hats yeah. and it could be a lot, but just so you know, if you ever do go back to New Orleans, I will come with you. I will record your content. <laughs> Perfect. And I'll even give you a whole itinerary, you know, on where we can go. Um, but in, that's, interesting that you said and and i kind of was alluding to that i was hoping you would say that where you get to a location right portugal or new orleans wherever that is and you're like i'm business owner or am i marketer and where do i find the balance do i hire yeah. out do i focus on the business or do i capture the content and one of the most important things though which i'm sure you understand and for everybody out there in tv land you could can content and not even tell people that you're traveling you can keep that as your evergreen content and keep it so you spend maybe like a day or two just canning some beer all you knows or some videos of the cooking of the chef of your travels. And then you can schedule things out beforehand before you go away. So your content's always rolling. You yeah. have a set of metrics and your, you know, your audience and then release your travel content when you get back in, you know, certain campaigns and certain segments would be a good way to do that too. Just going forward. Yes. I agree. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> my, so I just full disclosure. So I just in the last few weeks got diagnosed or like realized I have ADHD. So I went and got mm -hmm. assessed, which is amazing. Like I wanted to know that I had it. I was like, sure. please. So now amazing. I'm on yeah. Adderall. But um, so the idea previous to being on Adderall, of like scheduling things out to me is like, <sighs> like I want to jump out of a window. Cause it's just not how my brain works. Girl, it is so helpful. And there are so many tools we can talk about offline, really, to just cool. let, just assist you in streamlining your processes, which is what I specialize in. I've done that for many brands. But also then, so you can focus on canning the content, you know, just to really be consistent while you're traveling. Have yeah. one or two days out of that, or even a few hours and different angles and different, you know, um, like dishes and different tours. And then you're like, okay, that's done. I can enjoy being a business owner. Mm -hmm. You know, really enjoy yourself and then you get your shit together when you get home, which is so much yeah. easier, which is just an option, you cool. know? Yeah, yeah. That makes, yeah. that makes sense. So where are you going with your evolution with your brand now? I know, you know, there's, there's always this, this evolution with social media and, and marketing and branding, but 
where's where's Coach Cup going going in the future, and why? Um, I think you know I'm gonna well I'll continue doing retreats and I'll I already have my next food tours idea set up. Awesome. Um, yes, and in terms of marketing, just getting more clear. Yeah, hiring out because we talked about wearing the hats. Like I before <laughs> I I'm like oh I have so many hats. Before I left for Portugal in 2022, like I've always had full time jobs. Mm-hmm. So I was always building this on the side. Right. And then I, a week before, or two weeks before I went to Portugal, I got laid off from my job for, at a wellness school. Mm-hmm. And then I told you before I got COVID. So it's just like, boom, boom, universe is like something one thing, off. One hit after another. <laughs> yeah. And, and ultimately it was, you know, the best thing that could have happened to me because I was able to go to Portugal and not have like the Sunday scaries of, going back to a job and being like, yes. okay, this went really well. Now I can think <laughs> large and say, okay, I'm going to start scheduling two more for next summer and right. start laying the foundation. So that was great. But um, yes, I realized I, there's just too much. I need to hire out like, cause I also have a podcast. So I'm editing the podcast, doing my social mm-hmm. media, doing email marketing, yep. running classes. Like this Saturday, I'll be, I'll be doing a cuddle pile and bear yoga in New York city. Amazing. And then, selling the retreats, doing legit, you know, it's like, there's just so much. So taking orders and recording content and then the whole nine years. <laughs> yeah. And with ADHD. So I'm like, what did I, I don't even know how I got this far, but, um, but so yeah, hiring, you did it, but you did it, you know, and as I was yeah. saying on other episodes, my best friend says this practice makes progress. You don't have to be yeah. perfect. You're, yeah, you're yeah. getting shit done, especially as a business owner and you're working your ass off and you are on your social media, then you will be golden eventually. Just keep going. Yeah, and that's that's interesting because that has always been my philosophy. I think I've never strived for perfection. Like everything I do, like I really I really embrace like the awkwardness of myself. Yeah. And the flaws. So and like being inclusive and body positive, like I translate that to my content and my marketing and my business. So it's like sure. it's not perfect, that's fine. Like, you know, nobody's perfect. So I kind of have always been like, let me just do it. And then, and then improve it. We don't so want to be perfect, especially after COVID. COVID was all about the influencers and getting everything, you know, pristine. And that was like, we're all getting locked up anyway, right? Just for instance. Yeah. Time to just reevaluate the whole process, the whole marketing process, the landscape of what that would look like for businesses. People mm-hmm. want even brands, even even the like larger brands, even a Wendy's or McDonald's or Igloo, for instance. I talk about, about a lot about that on my, you know, my socials. Yeah. Because they just did such a great job at number one, nostalgia marketing is huge. Is going back to a place in time that is simpler that you can sell. Number two, they're just imperfect. We're humans. We want to attach ourselves and believe in people that are human. Yeah. COVID brought the human element back into social, in my opinion. Anyway. Yeah, I think you're right, and that works really well for me because I'm definitely not, per you know, perfect or yeah. polished always, and. I've always kind of been fine with that. So right. if the rest of the world is down, then I'll continue doing that. <laughs> and then you keep on going down that path and you should. Anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but always evolving your messaging. So, so what's in store for, I mean, I know you have other things coming up in your planning, but how do you get, what's your main messaging or the evolution of this? And what is it going forward to have people to sign up for these retreats? Like how do you market yourself? to assure that people feel comfortable enough in the community to join and then then to also talk about their story. Yeah. I mean, I think like my, my big differentiator is, you know, what I'm doing is smaller and intimate than, you know, most of the bear stuff out there. It's like big bear parties, big bear weeks, drinking, having sex, all things that are, you know, all all good. Yeah. I was just in Grand Canary in March and I had a blast, but, I'm creating something smaller and, and much more intimate and designed for connection and friendship and support. And I think people are craving that right now, especially after COVID people, I hear from people, you know, all my friends moved out of the town I'm in and mm-hmm. you know, you're not going into your office to see your coworkers. So I think people really want that. So I'm really focused on like creating connections and like deep friendships and connections and rediscovery with yourself. Mm-hmm. So I think that's like one of my main, my main 
messages and then the other is yeah around body image like I really have evolved from like someone who's very into nutrition and wellness and health and now I'm like the main thing that I think is important is like our mental health and our own image of ourselves and our bodies so really finding a way to authentically explain that which is not always the easiest no it's not thing to do because there's so much noise of body positivity and people think they need to feel confident in their bodies which is not always possible and there's body acceptance and you know there's all these different little camps so it's like i need i really need to just define what i'm doing somewhere like in the middle of all that sure which i'm i've been chipping away at um so yeah and again, that that's because practice makes progress. You have to chip away at it. You can't take a whole clump of clay and say, let's do everything at once because then you may not be successful. Yeah. Uh, and, and especially because you utilize social media to feel more comfortable within yourself, within your body, within your content, but you're getting it and utilizing it as a platform to allow others to feel the same by inviting them into your business. Yeah, and I have, like, separate to my Instagram, I have a Facebook community called The Belly Club. So it's like I also have that element of, like, bringing people together virtually, and there's a group chat where people are, you know, helping each other. And right. I, I think I'm really moving in the direction of less coach, more, like, community builder, you know, um, experience, develop, you know, creator, whatever it is. It's like I want to... I like bringing people together, you know, yeah. and creating spaces for people either physically or, or virtually. Virtually. Let's talk about briefly about the evolution of your newsletter. Why is it so important and what's your process in which you release that to your, to your audience? I feel like we need like a wah wah sound or wah, something because I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my process. So, okay. I, I, so I did have someone create kind of like, who helped me develop my brand further from what it used to be. Hmm. She helped. She's like a sister of mine. She helped create my website and my branding and templates for my newsletter. So I, hmm. I use MailChimp. It works for me for now. You know, I know there's areas for me to improve on this. Yeah. Um, and in terms of consistency, I don't always have it, but I usually like to do you know, I, I have my audience tag, so I know who is in the New York area. So I, whenever I have an event, I send out information about that. And then I try to do a newsletter each month. Right. But it's not, yeah, it's not consistent, I would say. How do you get your themes for your newsletter? Like once it once it's ready to roll out, roll out to your audience? Um, I just think of them. <laughs> I'm, very on the, I'm very on the fly with everything I do. <laughs> like, and I brought people in, like this guy... Uh, my friend Johnny Bear who does the podcast with me and I'm like we're just gonna do it like I'm just like we're gonna do it <laughs> and I think it, fl- it flips a lot of people out but for me it's like how I have to operate at some level but now I'm at a point where I, I do know that having like strategy and consistency and themes and all that is gonna help I feel like if, over the last like year I've my confidence has been boosted with the retreats I've been running to the point where I'm like okay I'm ready to level up sure you know yeah are you getting a lot of response rate or a high response rate from your newsletters? I get like, you know, between like a, like 30 to 40% open rate. Good. Okay. That's amazing. And, and usually some good click through rates too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very targeted audience. You know, it's like people have been to my events. I also ask for people's emails as they join my Facebook community. Yeah. So it's, it's very specific. I mean, I will say the hardest piece about all of it is is figuring out how to target different segments because when I started my company, it was just New York City based and then mm-hmm. COVID hit and then all of a sudden everything was virtual and I ran like, I, I think it was like 400 classes during COVID online. Amazing. So all of a sudden it went from New York to just like, I had people in Australia and I had people in Europe and people on the West Coast. And then now it's like, okay, how do I how do I still keep these people engaged when most of my stuff is in New York city? Right. And I, I'm obviously not wanting to blast people who are in <laughs> Australia saying like, come to my cuddle pile this Saturday in Manhattan. So I am, tr- it's still a work in progress of figuring out how to do that. Um, 
And I'm, you know, I, I still have to clean up my list and all of that. It's like a little project that I, I need to focus on. But like, you know, like a tactic or a campaign in social, that's, that's, a, that's a given always. You're always going to have to evolve your process. Yeah. Just plain and simple. Pride's coming up in June. You know, we're already in May. We're going into June. What are you looking for as far as your content? Which audiences are you looking to, you know, promote? And what's, what's coming up for the business as far as Pride's concerned that we can look forward to? Well, so I do have ideas for content I want to create for Pride. I, when I got home from New Orleans, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm amped. I'm like, I think the winter I had, I had a little <laughs> bit of a lull, depression, or just kind of like, I'm doing it. I'm like going through the motions, but I didn't feel inspired and I didn't feel mm -hmm. great to create content, like which, <laughs> which is that it's a whole nother thing. It's like, how do you, yeah, how do you show up for your business? And when, when you're the face of the business, when, you know, life is not always the easiest. Um, exactly. Very important. So I, I actually signed up for a content creation course, just like a, an inexpensive one on online and just started getting the juices flowing. I'm like, okay, what kind of content do I want to create? So I have some video ideas um, about coming out of the closet and um, just what my, like how beautiful my life has become because of that and all the experiences that I've had. So I have an idea for that. Um, because my dad, my, so my dad came out when I was 10, so I have a gay dad, and then he's married to a man, uh -huh. so I have, you know, who's, I call him my stepmom, Tim, but um, <laughs> when I came you. out, my, when I came out, my dad said, um, you know, after a while, he just said, you know, you're going to have some really interesting experiences and meet really interesting people because you're gay, because it's, you are in this, like, little club, yeah. and yes. it just dawned on me that he said that yes. to me, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that came true. I've met so many amazing people and I've grown a business and I've done so many great things that I wouldn't have done if I hadn't come out or if I was straight or something. So I'm like, yeah. I want to celebrate that. Absolutely celebrate that. And then the evolution of the business and, and the future of the business as well, especially during pride month. Yeah. So I think I'm not, I, I probably won't go too heavy on pride stuff. I'll do that video. And then a lot of it will be promoting my retreats. So coming up, I have, um, two retreats in Portugal. Mm -hmm. So I do one, it's going to be August 17th to the 25th. And that's kind of like, so it's Camp Air Hug, but it's more like beach summer camp vibe. Um, an hour north of Lisbon, like near Nazare Beach and in Lisbon. And then I have a second retreat there, which is wine themed. And that is um, September 8th to the 15th up in northern Portugal, so like Porto and the Douro Valley. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my next focus is like, you know, getting enrollments for that. Sure. And and then I do have an idea for next spring, summer for my next food tour, which will be Portland, Maine and Agunquit, Maine, which is like a gay friendly town in yeah. on the coast coast the coastline of, of southern Maine. Um and then really enhancing my podcast. So I'm like really focused on that. I have some great um, interviewees coming up and a lot of like canned recordings that I need to edit. Mm -hmm. So focusing on that and then stretch goal type thing is like, I, I've always, I've wanted to create online courses, but I haven't gone through with it yet. So that's probably like the next kind of evolution. <laughs> Yeah, that's the next phase. We'll be creating courses and likely writing some kind of ebook or, or publishing a book at some point. Okay. Okay. So a lot coming down the pike, but amazing stuff. Yeah. And always trying to make that next, you know, campaign to promote that all on social media, which it sounds like you're have under control. Amazing. Yeah. I don't I'm like feeling into my body. I'm like I feel anxious about it all, but yeah, I'll, yeah, I have it under control. I mean, yeah, it's like I, I think as you level up and grow, it's like part of you still feels like smaller, or, you know, there's imposter syndrome and all that shit. And, um, you know, I do trust myself now where it's like, okay, I know that I can do this. I know I can put on retreats and then the next thing will be creating courses and getting confident about that. And then it's mm -hmm. like one step at a time. One, one step practice makes progress, period. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. On that note, John, we are wrapping up, but I want to give you the platform to promote yourself. Where can we find you on the interwebs and out there in TV land to follow you? 
Cool. Yeah, this has been great. Um, so easiest is my website, which is coachcub.com. So coach and then cub.com. Okay. There you can find my podcast and my retreats and my merch and all that type of thing. And then in terms of socials, you can follow me on Instagram at coach.cub. And that's probably the best place. I also have a TikTok, Coach Cub, um, which is just a little bit goofier and like loose, <laughs> but I have fun with it. So yeah, if you're on TikTok, you can follow me there too. But my website, you can sign up for my newsletter there and also join my Facebook community at Belly Club all, all from the website. So that's the best hub. Amazing. John, thank you so much for coming on tonight. I certainly appreciate it. And everyone out there in TV land does as well. Everybody, that wraps up another episode of the Pride and Promotion podcast. Go forth with pride and we'll talk soon. Take care. See ya. And just like that, we're putting the finishing touches on another fabulous episode of the Pride and Promotion podcast. If today's conversation struck a chord, why not sing our praises with a quick rating and review on your podcast platform of choice? Your support is the spotlight that helps us shine and bring more folks into our ever-expanding audience. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Let's get social too. Follow us online for all the extra goodies, sneak peeks, and continued dialogue about marketing with pride and purpose. Tune in next time as we unfurl more colorful stories, champion the cause of inclusivity, and learn more from the cream de la cream of the industry. Until our paths cross again, keep pushing boundaries, stay true to yourself, and infuse every project with pride.